Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. I started podcasting in 2018, and my initial thought on podcasting was I would just get on and try and provide insight, doing one a week, and um, I was certainly nervous from the get-go, am I going to run out of material? And early on, somebody suggested, hey, why don't you start interviewing people? And so I said, okay, I'll start interviewing people. Truth be told, I was a little upset in the moment because it's, oh my God, I got to learn something new. Um, And I did, and then I started interviewing people, and it was a question of, okay, who do I interview? And I I don't want to say I was interviewing everybody, but I the stories all started to sound the same because I would talk to people about what they did with respect to networking. Um, And I was coming up on my 100th episode. I'm like, okay, who am I going to have for my 100th episode? Who am I going to have? And lo and behold, I got a notification from LinkedIn suggesting I connect with Bob Berg. Huh. Couldn't believe we weren't connected. And so I reached out to Bob and connected just, you know, the proper etiquette. Hey, Bob, you know, here's how we know each other. Let's connect. He connected right away, had a nice little message. And I'm like, you know what? I know he's big time. He's written this book, The Go-Giver, but I'm going to ask him to be on my podcast. I'm going to ask him to be on my hundredth episode, if he would. And right away, he's like, yeah, I'll absolutely do it. And he was my hundredth episode. And not only was my he my hundredth episode, but after we were done recording, he was just asking in Bob Bird fashion, you know, well, how else can I help you? I said, well, I'm looking for people to be on my podcast. And within a week, I had five or six other people who uh, he had lined up to be interviewed on my podcast. And these are really quality people, literally from around the world. Um, And it really changed the trajectory of my podcast uh, because I went from interviewing just really random anybody to really quality people who could talk about relationships and networking and generating referrals. So I was poking around on LinkedIn, as I do, and I saw that Bob, Jeff, and Kim were doing this program. uh, I think they did a a rendition of it uh, last week, but they had been doing it before. And so I reached out to them and said, hey, would you do it for my audience? And they said, absolutely. And uh, so here they are. This is probably less interview and more presentation, um, but I want to learn too. So Bob, Jeff, Kim, thank you. Uh, I guess I'll turn it over to you, Bob, and let you take it from here. Uh, Thanks, Frank. And thanks for that great introduction. Uh, You know, we've been buds for a long time, so it's uh, always nice to to reconnect with you. Uh, Yeah, I think when it really comes down to it, uh, the similarity in the message you'll hear from from Jeff and Kim and me, and and you've certainly learned this from from Frank, um, is that it's always about the other person. Uh, you know, the law number three in the go-giver is the law of influence. And it says your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. Now, what that doesn't mean is that you should be anyone's doormat or a martyr or self-sacrificial in any way, of course, but absolutely not at all. It's simply first understanding what we call the golden rule of, of business of networking. And that is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Well, here's the thing. There's no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you from others than by genuinely and authentically moving from that I focus or me focus uh, to that other focus. Uh, looking to make your win all about the other person's win. And someone might say, well, but, you know, is that real world? I mean, that, does that is that just theory or, you know, how does that work? And, you know, I would say that if you're in any kind of business where nobody is forced to buy from you, that's the only way you're going to have a, a, a sustainably successful and profitable business. After all, when you think about it, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet, right? No one's going to buy from you because you have a sales goal you want to meet. Nobody's going to buy from you because you need the money. 
And nobody's going to buy from you just because you're a really nice human being. They're going to buy from you only because they believe that ultimately they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And again, when you think about it, that's the only reason why anyone should buy, buy from, you know, from, from you, from me, from, from anyone. So, you know, it, so the, 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 the best thing we can do um, is take our focus off ourselves and place it on others. I like to say be internally motivated and outwardly focused. And I think if we begin with that, you know, that premise in mind, uh, we're always, we're always on the right track. So one of the things you're going to hear from is, and, and, you know, and, and we all know, by the way, that when it comes to the sales process, if you will, there are several things that we've got to not only get down, but we have got to really excel at, and we have to be able to, to do this consistently. One is, is understanding who is our perfect client, right? Who is that? But they nowadays, I think they call it your avatar, right? That person who they are, that person who is your perfect person, the person you are really targeting, right? So we have to know who that is. But next, we have to be able to connect with that person. Um, we have to be able to connect, though, on a deep enough level that this person wants to see us, that they want to engage in a sales conversation. Now, obviously, a lot of what all of you do is through referrals because, you know, with Am Spared, obviously, and you've got the best teacher in the business, uh, you know how to network and you know how to both give and receive referrals. So, so many of you, you start out, you're nine steps ahead of the game in a 10-step game. But for those people who you don't have a... a, a um, uh, a referral based relationship, you've got to be able to on your own, be able to connect with those people on, on again, that, that deep enough level that they want to see you. Then it's, it's getting, it's go, it's moving through the sales conversation. It's navigating through, it's leading that it's guiding through that sales conversation, beginning with that discovery. And, you know, I think this is something that while we all know, I think it's been, somewhat missed to a certain point in in certain sales teaching that that discovery session is i believe the most important part of the sales conversation why because we don't know what that other person really needs wants and desires until we ask and until we listen even if we know generally our marketplace and what they People still have their own individual needs, wants, and desires. This is where the discovery comes in. And to the degree that you do a fantastic discovery session, that is the degree to which the closing part will be very natural and very easy, actually. Why? Because with the correct discovery, by the time you get to that call to action, you're simply asking them to do something that they've already told you they want to do. Uh, one part of the sales conversation is, is working effectively within with objections. And what you know what Jeff and I say, and Jeff and I wrote a, a we co-authored a book uh, called Streetwise to Saleswise. The subtitle was become objection proof and beat the sales blues. And one of the things we say in there is, you know, for years, people have been taught to overcome objections. And we say, you can't do it. You cannot overcome an objection because nobody, no prospect wants to be overcome by their salesperson. You know, I can't think of a time when, uh, you know, when uh, back when I was in, in, you know, more direct sales and, uh, where I would, you know, correct a a uh, a prospect, and and they would respond by saying, "Thank you so much, thank you for showing me the error of my ways." You know what? I want to buy from you right now. No, of course not. It's it's absolutely the opposite. So we can't overcome objections, but we can do something better. We can work effectively within the objection in order to discover the actual true objection the root cause of the objection, which by the way, that prospect might not know themselves. 
And once we both understand it, now we can work together in partnership with our prospect in order to advance the sales process. Well, you know, you're going to hear from Jeff in a little bit. And he came up with an amazing concept after he retired from a, a very, very successful and lucrative uh, sales career and leading into sales management where he led a, a, a huge group. And, and he kind of came up with the reasons why people act the way they do, why they respond to certain stimuli and why those people are more likely to feel good about bringing you in and agreeing to speak with you and having a sales conversation, um, allowing themselves to be forthright during the discovery and how they respond when you correctly work through the objection process, right? Um, and then, you know, we need to be able to, again, uh, ask for the order, which again, it, it doesn't have to be anything fancy when you've done a great discovery. But then the final part is this, and here's where I think a lot of us really miss the boat. And that is once you have someone who just knows you, who likes you, who loves you, who trusts you, who has bought from you, who is your, your client, now it's how do you keep yourself not just top of mind, but top of heart? So that when they or someone they know needs what you sell, that you're the only one who could possibly come to mind. And you'll hear about that from Kim Angeli, who has come up with some absolutely brilliant material. She's a, a, a person who, when she was in the technology uh, sales field many years ago, she was a $65 million producer. And by the way, that's when $65 million was a lot of money. And uh, <laughs> and then she opened up a, an insurance business and, and really took it big before she retired. Now she just shows people how to build their businesses just the same way she built hers. So you'll notice in everything that, that Kim and Jeff and I talk about, it's all about how we can focus on that, that other person. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff uh, uh, right now, and because I, I I hope he will talk to us about fusion points, because this is something that once he retired, he wanted to know why is it that the success he had and why certain people he led had success and why others didn't. And he's done just a beautiful job of codifying that into something that can help all of us uh, build a bigger business. Thank you, brother. Uh, I'm so delighted to be here with you guys today, Frank. Thanks for having us on. You know, I love my part of when Bob and Kim and I get to do get together to do these things. Behind the scenes, we call them the Three Amigos Show because we're three good friends that have learned uh, to work together on some things. And my part reminds me a little bit of when I was in high school and one of my buddies would uh, buy a new car. First thing they wanted to do was bring me over, lift up the hood and show me how things worked underneath that hood, which is really hilarious when you consider I knew nothing about engines then, nor do I know anything about them now. But with what we do together in the Three Amigos things that we do, it's my job to give you a peek under the hood about something I do understand. It's about how the clients in your marketplace, how the prospects, how your clients, how people that you'd like to have be part of your organization make the decisions that make that possible. And like Bob said, after a 30-year career in sales and sales leadership, I was the state manager for a Fortune 500 insurance company in, in Texas. I had a question. Many of us had the same question. It was, how could you take two people who both on paper look like they should be very successful? And you put them out in the field of sales and one of them decides to make it. They persist and they go after it and they build a big career while the other decides to quit. So I wanted to know how that happened. And the interesting thing is the reason that happens is the exact same science behind why your prospects or your clients will make the decisions they make. And, you know, the single most important factor that's going to determine your future success is not the economy, it's not the political landscape, and quite frankly, it's not even your competition. The single most important factor that's going to determine your future success is how the prospects in your market uh, decide, even before they've met you, 
that they want to work with you, that they're willing to listen to you, that you can influence how they make that decision when you understand the science and you work with it instead of in opposition to it. And then by that same token, when you're having that sales conversation, you can influence their decision to move forward comfortably and take advantage of your value proposition. So there's so many things involved in that. And I'm going to cut it really short because I know we're not doing a long session today, but if you're interested in the science behind that, look for the works of Dr. Antonio Damasio, who was a professor of neuroscience at the University of USC and an adjunct professor at the Salk Institute. The, the basics of the science are this. Every decision that we humans make, neurologically speaking, happens pretty much the same way. There's a part of our brain that generates emotion. Through neural pathways, it communicates with a part of our brain that processes logic. When they get through, the product they produce is a decision based on whatever they're looking at at the time. Now, the way the brain does this is if you have a negative emotion, like uh, mistrust, uh, maybe you're not exactly sure about a person, uh, you know, you're, you're having some sort of a, a negative uh, emotion generated in the brain, your brain sends a somatic marker, an electric signal down into your body. It makes you feel physiologically different. It's the source of call reluctance if you have to make sales calls. And when it makes you feel physiologically different in that way, it's something you don't like. It raises your anxiety. It, it causes pushback. Your blood pressure may go up. You may actually even get angry, even though the situation in front of you may not be the cause. So when that negative emotion that sends a somatic marker to your body, but then it communicates through the neural pathways with the logic to process the decision every time the decision is going to be push away from the source of it, to say no, to be uncomfortable moving forward. And, and I call that a collision point. And at a collision point, your prospects aren't going to say yes to you. But the good news is that the opposite is true as well. When our brain produces a positive emotion like joy, love, trust, a sense of belonging, it still sends that somatic marker down into your body. You feel physiologically different. Ah, but in this case, it's a feeling that you like. It feels comfortable. It's it, Quite frankly, it's the way every great business relationship starts off. It's also how every great personal relationship uh, starts off. I was telling somebody yesterday, fusion points are why the second date even happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it produces that kind of feeling. So when that feeling combines with logic to produce the decision, it creates what I have branded as a fusion point. And a fusion point is that moment in time where logic and positive emotion merge and ignite. And it creates energy. It creates consistency. It creates persistence in our career. It creates an environment where your prospects are comfortable saying, yes, I'll have this first meeting with you. And then they say, yes, I'm comfortable being coming your customer, your client. And so, and it's why everything works. And it's one of the beauties of what you guys do, what Frank does with this networking group, because it's creating fusion points with people who then it be, they become comfortable taking that next step. And when the three yeah. of us get together, go ahead. Um, can you provide us the name of that uh, neuroscience again and maybe spell it if that's... It's Dr. Antonio Damasio, D-A-M-A-S-I-O. And his yeah. work was just... Uh huh. All right. And his work is his work is detailed. If you want to look at that study, it's very college textbook. I'll warn you ahead of time. Okay. But it, it his book that details his study is called the De Descartes D E C A R T E S error. And in his case, his work is on how the actual science happens. The rest of the work that came to future points is on the somatic marker theory of psychology and how all that works together. Okay. But basically, in a context of sales. I, we, when we're doing our things together on more extended versions of what the three of us do, I, co I coach people on how to create fusion points with a prospect in your marketplace that's never even met you, how to do that so that when you do ask for that first meeting, the percentage who say yes will go up because they're already having some of that feeling toward you. Uh, and then I, create, I teach the part where in the sales conversation, how to do the same thing there. One of the beauties of what Bob's been teaching on uh becoming objection proof for, for a couple of decades now is 
it does that same pro that same process instead of creating a debate in a headbutting session with a prospect who has an objection. It does it in such a way that you actually build the relationship, you build that comfort, you make them comfortable with help you helping them find a solution and then saying yes to you. And then I'll teach you to also a leadership component to it as well. And I won't go into too much now. We'll tell you a couple of things about the prospecting part, just kind of give you some things that I uh, teach in that arena. The first thing I teach is exactly what you guys already do. Frank, thank you for how you, you run your group. Uh, it's about the, the best way that you can create a fusion point prior to even asking for that first sales conversation is by getting an introduction from someone else who already knows you, likes you, and trusts you. Because when you do that, they already have fusion points with that person, and you're basically getting to borrow that credibility. And it's why what you guys do works so well in that arena. Uh, the second thing that I teach about creating fusion points prior to asking for that first visit is in creating touches before you ever do anything, whether it's so it depends on your industry. So there's no one rule on this. When we all get together, we, we coach people on more specifics for them. But it's about uh, creating positive touches, whether you're sending something that that person finds valuable to them before you ever ask for the first meeting. And if I, we, if you do that three times before you make the request for your first sales conversation with them, the percentage of people goes drastically up. And then the third way that I teach uh, in the concept of that, and I know you guys are getting a really high level quick view here, but you'll get the general idea, is this. Uh, in the phrases that you use in every conversation with them, even in setting up those first meetings, make sure that you're focused on their value proposition. And I think this is an area where most companies get slightly off in their messaging, even though they're very well intended. And I think, well, it, because a value proposition has absolutely nothing to do with your company. It has absolutely nothing to do with your product or your service. And it doesn't even have anything to do with how great you are as the salesperson. I know you, if you guys are hanging out with Frank, you're pretty great. It has everything to do with how their world gets better when they choose to do business with you. It's in essence, it's their value from your proposition. And it's one of the reasons all of this works together because when, as Bob said, when you are focused on how you can bring value to the other person, it is the most natural way to draw them toward wanting to work with you. And I know that's kind of a high level view, but I know we're, we've got a minimal amount of time. So I'm gonna throw it back to Bob or Frank and I appreciate you guys very much. And just quickly, I put uh, the uh, Wikipedia page for Antonio Damasco in the chat uh, so people can link right uh, to it if you're interested. So back to you, Bob. You know, Frank, it, it reminds me, and I, you know, certainly you teach this, and I, I listened to Jeff, and, and we're going to hear from Ken. It reminds me of something that a good friend of ours, a hero of ours, his name is Richard Wildman. He has a great, great book called 100 Proven Ways to Acquire and keep clients for law. There it is, and I've got mine. I've got mine right behind me up there on the uh, uh, on the thing. Um, and what and you know what he says is relate. Uh, <laughs> thanks, right? <laughs> he said what what Richard says is relationships drive revenue. Relationships drive revenue, and what a wonderful way to approach business. Because it means you're putting the relationships first. Remember, it's relationships drive revenue, which by the very nature of the saying says your focus is on the relationships. It's, you know, as John David Mann, my great co-author of The Go-Giver, he coined a, a, a saying that, that money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder to values lightning. So when we focus on that person and really making them feel genuinely good about themselves, about the situation and about us, that's really where sustainable success and profitability comes into play. Um, Kim Angeli is a, you know, Jeff was talking about fusion points. I believe that Kim Angeli is a walking fusion point. It is practically impossible to, to meet her and not absolutely fall in love with her. And you'll see as she talks that she just comes right from the heart. And what I love is she helps people again. When we, you know, she, what, here's what she says, and, and I love this of all her great Kimisms. She says, "It's not your client's job to remember you; it's your job 
to be unforgettable. And she shows how to be unforgettable in a way that that comes right from your true authentic core. So uh, Kim Angeli, come on down. You're on. Awesome. awesome. What do I win? I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so I'm Kim Angeli coming straight to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. If you've ever gotten stuck in the airport here, it's not my fault. I have as well. I'm just grateful I live here now and I can drive myself home. So my goal today is to show you how to become unforgettable in a very noisy world. How many of you think, I mean, we are in a noisy world and we have these three second attention spans and how are we gonna win customers and the hearts of the customers beyond the tra transaction. Bob and Jeff, we all do a great job of getting these amazing relationships and we help them across this bridge of trust and we get them in our hand. We have a little birdie in our hand and then we're like, we go chase two in the bush. We chase birds in the bush when we have an amazing relationship oh. right here that we could nurture beyond the closing table, beyond the policy, beyond the transaction. And then we ignore them and we go off and we chase someone else. So I wanna share with you to how we can stop chasing strangers and really build relationships deeper and get quality referrals and attract them to yourself because you're leaving such an unforgettable impression on the hearts of your customers and strategic relationships, your centers of influence. You know, I say relationships. I don't necessarily refer to them as customers because we all have relationships. And sometimes those people don't become our customer, but they do become a brand, you know, a brand ambassador and they will bring you your next best customer. So why do customers forget about us or don't do repeat business with us? The statistic is 68% of them don't feel like you care about them. They don't feel like you care about them. So how many of you on this call, and you can just raise your hand, um, own an automobile? Or maybe you take a horse to work. I don't know. Maybe you walk. But most of us on this call pay for automobile insurance, right? And so how many of you... Um, if you went to your mailbox today and you opened up a letter from the insurance company that your insurance went up by 30 or 40 percent, how many of you would have such an amazing relationship with your insurance agent? You actually know their name outside of the insurance company. You would call them up because you feel so appreciated and you would have a conversation about how to keep them as an agent and you have that great of a relationship with them, you would you would stay with them and not go shop them on Geico.com. Um, how many of you? <laughs> I don't see a lot of hands being raised. Some of you do. Um, when I keynote speak, I ask that question. I am a licensed and retired insurance agent. I have permission to ask it. There are not a lot of hands that go up. They're like, no, I'm going to shop that bad boy. I'm not going to pay 30 to 40% more for auto insurance. So let's just take a moment. And think about how, ma how many people are making you feel valued, valued in the relationship. Either you pay them monthly or you paid them at some time, you have a relationship with them. And they've actually had a fusion point, which is now part of my language, hanging out with Jeff. You've had fusion points beyond the transaction that made you feel valued. Oh, and by the way, you can remember their name 45 days after the transaction. If you didn't know, a lot of people can't recall your name beyond working with you. They have no name familiarity. In fact, one of my examples is I have just recently moved into this home and I sold another home within the last 60 days. And so we did a little bit of remodeling on both properties. And if you ask me right now what who painted my kitchen cabinets in the home that I sit in, it's been over 45 days. I personally would have to go and find their name somewhere in an email or an invoice. And that's really not my job. I got no fusion point beyond the $14,000 I paid them to paint the kitchen cabinets. I got never felt appreciated beyond the dollars I gave them. 
There was no wow beyond the transaction. And so they're probably not going to be referred in my network because there was really nothing above and beyond what I paid them to do. That's customer service. We want to have a customer experience, which is a wow. They, I paid to have the kitchen cabinets painted and they did that, but they didn't wow me beyond to be Kim approved referred, if that makes sense. Not to mention if someone said, Kim, who did you, who painted your kitchen cabinets for your new home? Um, I don't have, I don't know in my phone as a contact, <laughs> right? So this happens every day in every business is the familiarity of actually your name is lost. If you don't have a plan in place to stay top of mind, top of heart and be unforgettable in this noisy marketplace. And so I want to share with you today one of the tools in my toolbox that I share with private clients when I'm working with them to help them build their business better, to make sure they're having fun. If you're not having fun in your business, you might want to look at why not and that they're being profitable and they're, they're attracting the people they really want to serve at their highest self. And that one tool that I share is a gratitude call. And the gratitude call is something I developed in my journey. I used it in my insurance agency. Because if your insurance agent is only reaching out to you at the policy renewal and when they write it, get a new agent. I'm not going to tell you to go tell them how to do it. Like Bob said, I'll just say, you need to find an agent who cares about you beyond auto and mobile insurance, who is looking after your biggest assets. Go find a new agent who cares about you. So a gratitude call is really just having a conversation and doing these consistently. I was on, I'm a, I'm a learn a lot. I will always be learning till I take my last breath. I was on watching a YouTube the other day. And the guy said, the cheat code to life is consistency. A lot of people will do these for a season and get busy. And then we stop doing what got us attracting referrals, attracting amazing clients, having our centers of influence remember us when they're out in the marketplace. And so I would encourage you to adopt gratitude calls in your weekly planning. Just block a day, like go in your calendar, and put gratitude calls and do two or three a week. Have some conversations with your past customers, your relationships. I made a call yesterday to a client of mine. Now he does have me on retainer, but I don't talk to him all the time consistently. He has me on retainer for some things I've done for him for years. And I called him up and he's like, oh my gosh, I have the Chamber of Commerce president in my office. We start a conversation. And in that conversation, it was not the purpose of the call when I called him. He just happened to answer the phone because he will, even if someone's in his office of value, that might be of value to me. And I, I picked up a speaking engagement for February in 2025 with the Chamber of Commerce president from that call. And what did Alan say to me? It was so good to hear your voice. I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks. People are craving feeling seen, heard, and loved. I call that gratitude because we can't go around saying, I love you, man, to clients or relationships. You could, but you might be creepy. But you can show appreciation and gratitude. So I would just encourage you to add this as a tool in your plan after the sale. This is something that we could, we need to refine. We're very good at getting clients in relationships we need to work a little harder on making them deeper and more and stickier. So if you want the gratitude call scripts, you can email me. I will put my email in the chat. It's Kim at KimAngeli.com. And I will email them to you personally. And it's just a framework. And it's not selling, you know, it's buy one, get one. We're having a sale. It is all about the other person and showing value to the other person instead of being self-centered. Because at the end of the day, it is not your customer's job to remember you. It's your job to be unforgettable. Wonderful, lovely. And I, you know, and I, I know some of the gratitude calls that you've talked about in the past with clients of yours that 
but again, it was simply calling them to just check up on them, to say hello, to say thank you, to, and yet something came about because of that, directly or indirectly. And it's kind of amazing how often that happens. And I think you make a great point when you say, people just want to feel that way. They want to feel like someone cares. And here's the, the interesting thing about this. It just goes to show that if you just show up and really care about people, you're ahead of the rest of the pack. <laughs> you know, and that's what's so interesting about it. And it's it's a good feeling to just check up on someone. And to just say hello. And, you know, you were, you were, you had one example, Kim, where, you know, you would talk to, you would call someone just to, uh, again, it was a gratitude call. And you could tell there was like a little bit of their energy was a little bit low. And you just said, said to them, you know, if you're comfortable with it, you know, feel welcome to share with me what's going on. And they did. And they needed to tell someone. And you were the one, their salesperson. You were the one that was there. I don't know if any additional business came came from it, but that wasn't your point. It was just to be there for them. So, you know, it's it's sort of like you do the right things in the right way. And as you said, consistently enough, and you create that benevolent context for your success. And of course, Frank, that's what you teach. And, you know, I'm just so grateful for Am Spirit and for the work you do. You are really the, you're that you're that embodiment of a go-giver leader. And uh, we really, really appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I feel a little guilty. Like this is the easiest podcast episode I've ever done. The most impactful, the least effort I've ever had to do. Um, but for those who listen to my podcast, you'll know that I always turn the tables um, and I appreciate all the value you guys have provided. Um, how can the how can this audience help you? And and this is being recorded and it'll go out to other people. What what do you guys have going on? Um, I know you've got the books out there, the Go Giver, which is a million plus. Um, the book uh, Streetwise to Saleswise that uh, Jeff and Bob wrote. Um, what else is going on out there? You can let us know about. And, you know, one thing I will suggest to everybody, if you get a chance, regardless of anything else, is to get Richard Wildman's book. 100 Proven Ways to Acquire and Keep Clients for Life. As you can tell, it's uh, there are a few tips in there and strategies that are that are pretty good and will help you with your business. It's really, you know, about developing, as, as, as he calls it, delighted advocates uh, for your business. Uh, basically, we have a, an event coming up in September that if you can if you can make this happen for yourself and get there, uh, I'm going to put the... Uh, I'll put the uh, link. I can do it, Bob. Okay. Yeah, I actually just did it, which is amazing for okay. me. Actually, multitask. I, I pressed the button while I was talking. I, and it's like I'm I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is a it's a, a wonderful event. And we actually happen to to get Richard Wildman for this one, which is kind of amazing because his uh his client list is sort of like the Fortune 100. And uh, I think he had what he tell us he had four open dates in August. <laughs> you know, otherwise he's all, all over the world. So this guy is is big. But um, so yeah, Kim, Jeff, myself are in, of course, the great Richard Wildman will be there. But it's much more than just two days of of listening to speakers. It's an intimate audience. There's gonna probably there'll be anywhere from 40 to 60 people there. Everyone there will be successful already in their field. So the people you're going to meet and that you're going to build relationships with, that you're going to collaborate with, that you're going to exchange information and strategize with are all people who are very successful. They've been to a lot of functions before and sales training and they, you know, we all have the same libraries and the whole thing. This is the high quality group of people that you're going to really interact with. And uh, we begin, first of all, it's at an absolutely beautiful hotel called The Ben, uh, which is right on the intercoastal, the lagoon in the intercoastal, uh, right across from Palm Beach Island. Uh, some people will be bringing their families. They did the last time. Uh, so, you know, bring your spouse, partner, family, make a vacation out of it. It's right near the shopping area, Worth Ave on in Palm Beach, whatever. But we're going to start out on Sunday evening with a delicious buffet dinner. Um, and then it's going to be two days that are going to be really, really game changing because it's going to take your already successful business to that next level of success. So it's going to be a lot of fun. 
So it sounds great. I do want to let people know that uh, the three books that Bob mentioned, uh, we give away in Am Spirit for people who refer members to Am Spirit. So, uh, uh, um, so they are. We have copies here. Um, I'd like to open it up for Q and A. I know, I know, uh, Bob, Jeff, and Kim have other things going, but maybe a couple questions that people might have, or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, they, they give us a lot. Just raise your hand if uh, you virtually raise your, raise your virtual hand if you have a question. Oh, go ahead, Shelly. You're muted. Hi, all. Uh, this has been fabulous today. Really appreciate it. Uh, I actually just uh, jumped out to the SalesWise live site, and I was wondering, are there any opportunities to participate virtually, or is it all live? Um, I'm really sorry. It is live. And one of the reasons is that there's just no replacing that aspect of the event. Uh, you know, Jeff and Kim and I and, and Richard, you know, we hopefully do a good job that everybody enjoys. But that extra thing about it is the audience. Yeah. So, yeah, if you can get there, sometimes the timing doesn't work out. But if you can get there, we would absolutely love to have you. Thank you for asking. Great question. Yeah, Thank I you. think I think a bonus of any one of those things is certainly you three bring the value, but it's the other people you get to network with. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And that's hard in, in a Zoom setting or whatever virtual setting. Well, you get access questions? to all three of us for the entire event and we're in the crowd working with you and all that. And you can't really pull that off on a virtual event. Yeah, that's true. No other questions. Oh, uh, Charlie, go ahead. Hi, hey, Charlie. Bob, good to see you again. You were kind enough to be on my television show several years ago. Good to see you. Uh, when I first read your book, what was it, 2007, 2008, I was very much taken with the no like, and trust concept. Things have evolved. Sometimes people don't buy based on trust. They're based on value. So could you, all three of you, share with us uh, what triggers trust? Hey, do you guys want to go first and, since I've been... The, the biggest thing that will trigger trust is when you're focused on that other person and, and and doing things that it's not about the value that you think you're going to provide. It's about what would that person find valuable in this moment, whether it's something that's helpful to their business or whether it's the actual interaction with you or in the sales conversation with the questions you ask that are focused on them so they can talk and, and, and really get a chance to share their focus and their ideas. That's the biggest way that I, I said it builds that value and that trust is because of the fact that your focus is so much not what they're expecting if they're thinking of the, quote, traditional salesperson's approach. And so th that's the way I would recommend. Thank you. Did you want me to answer that, too? Sure. I'm all about learning, Kim. Okay. So one of my things, too, that I um, do just naturally is is the, the discovery call is, I would say it's one of the highest value things you can do. I actually do them ongoing. I don't do them just the first year. I believe it's something you should do with clients ongoing. Year two, year three, I think that's the missing piece is we don't reconnect with people enough just because things change. Um, actually, in my service industry clients, we started doing happy bags, um, which is where we're doing a before the job even starts or they're having a conversation, I do with re this with real estate agents as well, is we're doing a fusion point leave behind right at that initial contact before they even buy one thing. Because in the subconscious mind, it is the reprogramming of the mind. The subconscious mind is like, oh, oh, I and, and I've done this with pest control. I have dog biscuits on vans. I have happy bags with notepads and pens because wives and women are a lot of the ideal clients. And there's always a notepad and a pen with an arm's length for me to write a grocery list. And so that is something of value that we're giving. And even I will give, I will connect people or add value to someone's life way before I ever get a sale or any kind of commission out of them. And it's really leading with that person in that you're serving them at your highest self and it's all about them. And I'm taking the with them out of the equation, which is what it's all about me. Thank you. 
Thanks for the question, Charlie. Uh, we don't have any others. Um, oh, Barnes yeah, think one Dr. more. Barnes? I got one, Frank. Please. Um, I, I, yeah, so I, was good to see I would be shocked you. if you didn't chime in. <laughs> good to see you, Frank. <laughs> it's been a while. Frank was on my show. He did an awesome job. It was really a lot of fun. You were one of my first guests, Frank, and now oh, it's right. a year and a half in. <laughs> Yay. So I'm wondering... I have received, and I'm just going to be honest, I've received a lot of really, really crappy introductions. You know, <laughs> They're not well done. Let's just be real. Like a really good introduction is going to have specifics about why the people should meet, what you see in common, what would be the possibilities. What else would you all add to that? You know, how can we, because that's one of the ways I like to serve. I just love to connect people. I don't care if I ever get business from it. I just love to connect good people. So I'd love to hear from you all what you think makes a really great introduction of people. And that can be a referral, but it also could be for joint venture par partnerships, you know, to have somebody on your show, whatever. Well, I think you hit on some of the, the finer points and some of the good points that you, you do when you introduce. You, you definitely edify each other and let each other know how and why they would be able to, to serve. But so let's take this from a, a, a different angle. It's, it's when you make the introductions, you want to make sure to do it in such a way that the people who want to be introduced want to be introduced. Because mm -hmm. too often now you see people do these blind introductions to people. Hi, Dave. Hi, Mary. Hey, you're both awesome. Would have synergy. Leave it to you to connect. And that can be absolutely um the worst thing that you can do some people do not want to be introduced to others without first knowing that you're going to introduce them for whatever reason it might be and this goes back to where jeff and kim have talked about it it's not what we would find of value it's what the other person would find to be of value you know some people don't want to be introduced without knowing for without being asked first because they're too busy they they feel as though they're obligated to then put a lot of time into that person which they just for whatever reason they don't want to do or they feel as though after the introduction they're going to get hit up afterwards you know for business and and so forth and so what i always do personally is i reach out to both people let them know that I would like to introduce them to so-and-so. And sometimes I say the name, sometimes I don't, depending if it would put anybody on the spot for them to know. And I tell them the reason why, may I have your permission to introduce? And then I make the introductions. Uh, I've had so many people thank me for doing that and telling me that they didn't know that, you know, they could really do that. But then, you know, you get people who, uh, who will say to me, well, Bob, I know by now, if you want to introduce me to someone, it's going to be good. Just go ahead and do it. You don't need my permission, but they appreciated the fact that I did ask to see how they wanted to be introduced if they did want to be. You know, if I could add one thing to that, one of the things that I learned from Bob, when I first read Endless Referrals, it was back in the year 2000, and the book literally had a huge impact on the rest of my life. But one of the things that I did from the general message that Bob was doing is I began to develop a referral network with my existing clients. I was a business-to-business -business sales environment in a, a business-to-business -business sales environment in the employee benefit arena. And so I had scheduled a meeting with one of my clients called ahead of time. He owned a mortgage company. And I, I sat down with him and I said, look, I want to thank you first off because you have done something here that helps my family. I feed my family by what I do for a living and you're my client. So thank you so much for that. And of course, he was, he was kind about that. And I said, but I want to return the favor. Could you please tell me, I mean, I meet a lot of people all the time. Could you tell me what I need to be asking these people to know if they would be a good client or a potential client for me to send your way. And he did two things. First off, he literally, he took his glasses off. He laid them on the table and said, I have to tell you something first. And I said, what? And he said, thank you. And I said, for what? I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> he said, because I've been in business 30 years. I've had salespeople ask me referrals all the time. You're the first to ask me how you could refer business to me. And so we went through his answers on that. But then what I did, I had my uh, cell phone with me. And I already kind of had an idea of a couple of people from his what he was saying, who I would first reach out to. And so in front of him, I said, well, let me make a call on something. 
I called one of my clients and I said, uh, I'm going to change the name. Hey, Bob, I just wanted to give you a quick call. I've actually got a friend I think will be a good contact for you to meet. He's in the mortgage business. He does this, this, this. And I said, I know him. I like him and I trust him. And I think you'd be a good connection, but I won't, don't want to do it unless you say it's okay. I did that twice. They both said it's okay. I said, all right, well, you can expect a call from, hung up the phone, gave him the information, and he knew exactly how to refer business back to me from that point forward. Thank you, Jeff. And I agree with both of them. I do not connect anyone. They have to check the Kim Angeli approved box. <laughs> if they're not going to show up and they're going to ghost my person, I will not connect you. That painter who painted my cabinets will never be connected to anyone in my network. Neither will my old irrigation person. Because if they don't show up well, it is a reflection on me, myself. And so I'm very intentional with connecting. And I vet them out completely if it's mutually beneficial, just like they do. And I connected somebody yesterday and it took me two days to confirm the connection. But I'm, I'm not going to just sling a business card. I've never done that in 30 years. I just don't do it. This is oh, and I did want to put, I'm sorry, oh, Bob has incredible networking questions that you can use in networking um, opportunities. And I'm going to put the link in the chat um, where you can get them. It is something I share with clients. It's something I use myself and it will elevate your positioning and authority in the marketplace, even speaking the way Bob speaks with the networking questions. Um, so I'm going to add them. If you've never seen them, print them out, put them in your binder, memorize them. Um, and the last question is the most important one, but they are powerful ways to really position yourself as someone who is a go-giver. You'll never have time to ask more than two or three questions in any one conversation. So that it's not for you to interview the person. You know, it's it's more just to know them. Uh, to know the questions and ask the ones that you deem appropriate. But the first two, asking someone how they got started in their business, what they enjoy most about it, you could ask those first two anytime to any new person you meet and immediately you'll find them becoming more attracted to you and wanting to know more about you than the one key question. Uh, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with is a good client for you is kind of the, the game changer. You know, when I listened to all three of you, and those were three fantastic answers, so thank you. I was just thinking I like to do as many things at once as possible, so a gratitude call with introductions. That's what I'm going to do. You know, thank you so much for supporting me and helping me feed my daughter and our five rescue animals, and I want to just help you. What can I do to help you? I love it. Robert, can you uh, quickly... Uh ask your question. They, I know they've got to get going. Sure. Um, playing off of Dr. Barnsley's question, what's your thought about if I'm, because I love, you know, and by the way, Bob, it's great to read. Great, great to see, see you, Robert. Wow. Yeah. You know, That's and I a, connect a, people. A and, legend. I of, and I do a lot of networking. So playing off of what Dr. Barnsley said, what do you think about if I'm constantly introducing somebody to ask them to write to me, write me how they want to introduce me, how they want me to introduce them when I find the right connection. Wonderful. I think it's perfect. Okay. That's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Because they want to be positioned in a certain way. And this allows you to be able to edify them to the, the utmost degree. Great question. Anything else? Um, yeah. Truth. Truth. But you have something to say, Bob? I'm sorry. Frank, I was just going to say, if anybody has any questions regarding SalesWise Live after you go to the page or you have questions about, you know, bringing people on your team with you, putting together a group package, uh, Kim's information, when you scroll down, Kim's information, she just put her phone number. I love her. She just put her, her phone number down there. Uh, feel welcome to call Kim and she will discuss all of that with you. Go ahead, Frank. Sorry. No, no, no. True to form, Bob. I got way more than I expected. Thank you very much. I know uh, I know everybody appreciates this. I will let everyone know I'm going to download these. Uh, uh, I'm going to download this. Um, we'll load it to YouTube and get that link out as soon as possible. I know that there are probably people you know that would should hear this. Um, and I know there are people who wanted to be who, who couldn't. And so I'm going to get it out uh, far and wide. But Bob, Jeff, Kim, thank you very much.
Thank you. Great to be with all of you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.